Hello and welcome to your virtual training course. Now Group is a social enterprise who support people with learning disabilities, learning difficulties and autism into jobs for the future. We are also the organisation behind the development of the Jam Card. Today's course is entitled the Jam Card Return to Work Toolkit. During the COVID pandemic, a number of your staff may have been working from home or perhaps have been furloughed. You may now be considering the possibility of reintroducing your staff to the workplace. This training will help you to support your neurodivergent staff who are returning to work. Before we get started, there are some housekeeping elements that we need to look at. So this is a copyrighted training, so we would ask that you do not take any pictures of the slides today or you do not reuse any of the resources. We do support equal opportunities and we will ask you to give some feedback at the end of today's session. Please feel free to give us any information on how we can make training more accessible or we can make improvements going forward. Also, please feel free to take notes throughout the training session today. You will see here in front of you a brief overview of the Now Group services. As I said before, our key mission is to support people with learning disabilities and learning difficulties in autism into sustainable employment. However, there are many strands to the Now Group. And we would say if you would like any more information or you would like to avail of any of the services that you see here on the screen in front of you, please feel free to visit the website or call our head office and we will be more than happy to give you any information that you need. So just to reiterate the purpose of the training today. So the Jam Card Return to Work Toolkit will enable businesses and organisations like yourselves to support neurodivergent staff when they are returning to the workplace. So here are your learning objectives. So hopefully by the end of the training session today, you will be able to identify and understand the concerns of your neurodivergent staff who are returning to work. You will be able to recognize key areas to consider when reintroducing your neurodivergent staff to the workplace. And also you will have identified practical ways to support your neurodivergent staff in returning to the workplace. So in this first section, we're going to identify concerns that your neurodiverse staff members may have around returning to work. And we will also identify practical ways in which you as the employer can respond to these concerns. For some of you, neurodiversity may be a new term. So what is neurodiversity? Well, neurodiversity refers to the different ways the brain works and interprets information. It is a concept where neurological differences are recognized and respected as any other human variation. These neurological differences can include those diagnosed with autism, ADHD, dyslexia, dyspraxia, dyscalculia, and Tourette syndrome, amongst others. So let's look at our concerns. There are eight concerns here that we have identified and we will go through each of these one by one during the training session. The first concern is around consequences. Staff may be concerned about making a mistake regarding any new procedures and whether they may be punished as a result of this. So of course, coming back into the workplace, there will be new legislation in place, new rules, new regulations, new policies, and staff may be concerned that they may get something wrong or that they may make a mistake. So as you can see in the bold here at the bottom, what we would recommend to you as an employer is that you give this person time and patience and reassurance, allowing them time to adjust to their new environment. The second element here is around rule breaking. So some staff may feel that others are being fraudulent if they are not rigidly following the new procedures. They may find this frustrating and upsetting and even stressful. It will be important as the employer to explain to that person that everyone is adjusting to the new procedures and that any situations will be addressed. Some neurodivergent staff members may also be concerned that their job role may differ when they return to work because of the changing circumstances. As an employer, you should communicate any changes clearly. 
It will also be hugely important to reassure staff about what will stay the same, and this will bring comfort and familiarity. So for example, on coming into the work building, your staff member may be required to sign in and they may be required to sign out on the way out as part of your new procedures. It is important that you communicate this to your staff member, but it is also important to communicate what will stay the same. So for example, you will tell them that when they come into the building, they must sign the piece of paper. And when they go out, they must sign the piece of paper. However, they will still come in the same entrance. They will still go and sit at the same desk and their job role and their duties will be exactly the same as they always have been. By communicating what will stay the same, this will bring comfort and familiarity and reassurance to your staff member. The next element is the workplace. Anxiety has been rife during the pandemic and staff members may be worried about the risk of catching the virus if they return to work. It is important to communicate that all social distancing and hygiene measures have been put in place to give your staff reassurance and to make sure that they feel safe when they're coming back into the workplace. As some neurodivergent staff may have sensory needs, and sensory preferences, you need to take this into account when supplying items like hand sanitizers. Certain smells and certain textures may seem repulsive to some, so consider supplying a range of sanitizers with different smells and textures to allow staff to choose one that they are comfortable using. Dealing with change. Some neurodivergent staff who like routine and structure might find any changes difficult and worrying and stressful. It is important to communicate the changes, allowing time for them to prepare and adapt. So a period of notice is always helpful. But again, as we said before, it is even more important to reassure staff of things that won't change to bring reassurance, comfort and familiarity. So again, communicate the changes, but also communicate what will stay the same. For some staff, structure is very important and there may be a worry that there will be a lack of routine when it comes back, to, when they come back to work due to the, any changes. Putting strong schedules and rules in place around things like room usage, desk and workspace usage may bring clarity and a sense of routine to that particular staff member. And finally, public transport. Travel can be a source of anxiety for some at the moment, especially around the use of public transport during the pandemic. There may be concerns from neurodivergent staff around changing of timetables, wearing PPE and social distancing. So any support and any information that you can give to your staff members around traveling to and from work will be most helpful. And again, will give them that feeling of being supported and that feeling of reassurance. The second section is around considerations. In this section, we will help you to identify key areas you, you might need to consider as an employer when reintroducing neurodivergent staff to the workplace. We will also provide you with practical tips on how to implement these considerations in the most supportive manner. As you can see here on the screen, there are 11 key considerations. The first is considering a staff consultation. Consider a survey to see how comfortable your staff actually are about returning to work. Also, you can have one-to-one -one conversations and offer any extra support if staff feel anxious. Make any reasonable adjustments for reassurance. They may not be ready to come back to work, so consider allowing them to continue to work from home if that is a possibility. But a staff survey can be a really helpful way of gauging how stressed your staff are about coming back into the workplace or how comfortable they feel about it. And then you can make any adjustments accordingly. Clear communication is key. Consider using a variety of communication methods to ensure that everyone understands the new procedures and any changes being made. So for example, you can use things like email, text, social media, you can use videos, you can use Zoom calls, Microsoft Teams calls. There are lots of different ways to communicate. 
And we have to consider that not every communication method is suitable for every person. So identify what works best for that person and then communicate in that way. Consider your signage. So consider using clear signage as a way of communicating new procedures. For example, things like social distancing, one-way systems, hygiene, etc. It may be helpful to use a variety of communication methods in your signage, again, to suit a variety of learning and communication styles. So for example, writing may not suit everyone. Could you introduce more pictures or more symbols? Consider your schedules and rotas. It may be helpful to consider implementing schedules and rotas around the usage of rooms, desks, workspaces, etc. Strong schedules will provide a sense of routine and structure for those who need it. It may also alleviate any worries around shares, workspaces, or things like overcrowding. Consider personal protective equipment. If your staff are required to wear PPE, ensure that they fully understand the importance of wearing it and communicate this very clearly. You may also need to check if those with sensory needs are comfortable wearing it. And if not, consider how you can resolve this issue. Can you put a reasonable adjustment in place? Some of your neurodivergent staff may even be exempt from wearing something like a mask. Consider a symptom protocol. Communicate why and when the checks need to be carried out. This could be communicated to staff in a clear way. A video may work well for this. Examples of symptom protocol would be things like a screening tool, temperature control, a health questionnaire, and a temperature check. So for example, your staff member may be required on entering the building to sign in, have their temperature taken, and fill out a health questionnaire. If that is the case, this needs to be communicated very clearly to your staff member as to why it needs to be done and how it needs to be done. And again, we could say here that a video may work very well for this. Training, an induction training session prior to returning to work may be beneficial. Providing a training session will allow staff to ask any questions and air any concerns. A training session could be delivered via a video call, so something like Zoom or Microsoft Teams. And this will help your staff member to have time to digest the information, prepare for any changes, and as we've said, ask any questions or air any concerns that they may have. Think about staff who are using public transport. Do your staff really need to come into work? Can they continue to work from home? Or can they drive into work instead of using public transport so that they are in contact with less people? Timetables may have changed during the pandemic and therefore working hours may need to be adapted. Discuss the importance of wearing masks and social distancing on buses and trains. Lots to consider here when thinking about your staff who are using public transport. But do they really even need to use it? And if they do, Make sure that you communicate well the importance of things like social distancing and wearing masks. Communicating hygiene procedures. You can communicate hygiene procedures through things like email, deliver training sessions, using videos, and of course, clear signage around building. A video can work really well for this. For example, as we return to work, we provided a video tutorial on hand washing procedures for our staff and for our participants. And this um, helped our staff and participants know exactly what to do and what to expect when coming into the building. Also ensure that you have necessary products stocked up, for example, hand soap, sanitizers, and disinfectant wipes. You do not want to run out of these at any stage. Expectations. You need to clarify what is expected of your staff when returning to work using strong communication methods and setting out very clear guidelines. It will also be helpful to find out from your staff what they expect of you as the employer and what they expect of their working environment when they return to the workplace. And lastly, in this section, we are going to look at tools. 
Here we will provide you with a summary of practical tools that you can use to support your, your neurodivergent staff on returning to the workplace. There are three tools here that we can provide. Guidelines, communication and support. So you will need to consider developing very clear guidelines and policies around the following subjects. Social distancing, hygiene and hand washing, work surfaces and maintaining them and cleaning them, sharing equipment, the use of communal spaces, the use of public transport, symptom protocol, so for example, what to do if someone uh, is diagnosed with COVID-19 or is, has been in contact with someone with COVID-19, discipline around what happens if the procedures aren't followed correctly, schedules and rotas, and of course, also around remote working. Secondly, communication, as we have said, is key. Use a variety of communication methods to ensure everyone can learn and understand the new procedures in a way that is best suited to them. As we have already identified in this session, people communicate in different ways. So identify what is best suited to that particular person so that they clearly understand any new procedures or any changes that have been made. Can it be visual through something like a video? Does it need to be written down for that person in an email or on a document? Or is it around verbal communication? So something like a phone call or even a video call? Or do you need to be clearer of with your non-verbal communication around things like hand gestures, body language, facial expressions, etc.? And lastly, support. Think about how you can best support your staff when they return to work. You could implement things like support groups. Body systems work really well where you can identify a particular staff member to buddy up and support another staff member. You could create a quiet or safe place where the staff member can go if they're feeling overwhelmed or anxious or they just need some time out. You can also provide mental health workshops and you can provide counselling services also. So that brings us to the end of our short training session. Hopefully now at the end of this session, you have identified and understood the concerns of your neurodivergent staff who are returning to the workplace. Hopefully now you have also recognised key areas to consider in reintroducing your neurodivergent staff to the workplace. And thirdly, you have identified practical ways to support neurodivergent staff when they are returning to the workplace. You will see here in front of you that we do provide other training options. We deliver jam card and disability awareness training. We can also deliver for you neurodiversity in the workplace training. We can also um, help you support neurodivergent staff who are remote working at the moment and aren't returning to work. Um, and we can also um, deliver emergency first aid at work training for you. Some of these are done in the similar way to this training session today. Some of these can be done via Zoom, but during a live group session, we can tailor it to your needs. So please feel free to contact us. Give us a call at our head office or contact us via our website, um, and we will be more than happy to give you any information on any of those other training options if you need it. And so lastly, um, and not least, we would just like to say thank you so much for taking the time to take this training course today. We hope that you find it beneficial. We hope that you um, will have found practical things there that you can implement when helping your staff return to work. Please let us know how you find it and please complete our feedback form. And we would be so grateful if you could give us some information and tips around how you think we could improve our training going forward or how you think um, it went well or what you enjoyed about the course. So again, thank you so much for joining us and hopefully we will see you again.